San Francisco Public Works, and I want to welcome you all to our launch of the new pilot program to help commercial uh, property owners in neighborhood commercial districts and other commercial districts address graffiti on their properties. Um, this is a really exciting new program, um, and we're delighted to launch it today. And with that, I would like to introduce our mayor, London Breed. Good morning. It is so great to be back in the inner sunset. Um, I really miss it here. I miss the folks in the farmers markets and the businesses. And I know for certain that this community is especially now in good hands because of its new supervisor, Myrna Melgar, who I want to acknowledge as the person who really spearheaded this, this program. Um, I know that uh, when I served on the Board of Supervisors, one of the things that I tried to tackle um, aggressively was the challenges around graffiti. And um, we, we did a lot of great work then, but the responsibility continues to fall on so many property owners you know, who are not asking for their buildings to be tagged, who you know, are constantly over and over again cleaning up their properties, including this one right here, which just last month graffiti was painted over and at the expense to the property owner. And we understand that there are a lot of small property owners who are struggling. And we understand that there are challenges with trying to meet the city's guidelines to get these properties painted appropriately so that they don't impact the communities that they're in, especially our commercial corridors, where they can be perceived as blight and can make the neighborhood really, really challenging. And so today uh, we're launching a program that really I think is going to be a game changer to support our small businesses. Um, you know, every month in City Hall, I remember again as a member of the Board of Supervisors, we celebrate small businesses. We celebrate Small Business Month. And every year, I'm even more frustrated by what we're not doing to support our small businesses in our city. But I am proud that, especially during the pandemic, the amount of money that we've provided to deal with some of the vandalism that has occurred with businesses, some of the additional resources needed to make repairs or improve the conditions of some of these businesses because many were struggling and weren't able to generate revenues because in some cases they had to shut down because of the pandemic. You know, we're working constantly to try and figure out ways with business, you know, where we can help. And this is one of the ways from talking to the various merchants in the various commercial corridors that Supervisor Melgar learned of this very challenging problem and frustrating problem that has been extremely costly. So this program that we're announcing today will provide $2 million this year and next year to support the abatement of graffiti for those property owners who reach out to us, give us permission, and allow us to do it. Um, they will still receive the notices. However, there will be information about this program to provide the level of assistance that's necessary to ensure that we are working together to support small businesses in our city and it is no longer continuing to be um, a financial drain on these businesses, especially uh, when they didn't anticipate it in the first place. So I want to thank Department of Public Works. I want to thank Carla Short and the whole team. Um, there's really a lot of graffiti challenges in the city and I want to just explain the difference. You know, we see a lot of public art. Um, public art involves getting permission <laughs> in order to put that artwork on somebody's property. Um, and the difference here is oftentimes people are choosing to do this without the permission of the property owners. And Department of Public Works is constantly called uh, and they take this responsibility seriously. We're expanding their capacity to do more of this work. So I'm really grateful to them for being so responsive and making the city uh, even more beautiful with the work that they do and doing a great job of matching the paint as best as they absolutely can. Um, so I know it goes, a lot of work goes into what they do and how they take a lot of pride into uh, this city and, and making sure that this city is beautiful. So we appreciate all the folks here from the Department of Public Works. Um, and you're going to hear from um, one of the business owners here uh, in just a moment. But at this time, I want to turn it over 
uh, to the supervisor who represents this neighborhood and District 7 in general, Supervisor Myrna Melgar. Thank you, Mayor Breed. Um, and thank you for uh, acknowledging this will be a game changer. Um, as we're going into the holiday shopping season, it's really important that our neighbors and people coming to visit our city feel welcome. And they feel like the commercial corridors are uh, not neglected. They're clean, they're well taken care of, they're safe. And uh, graffiti and tagging specifically, even though it's cosmetic, does really color that uh, perception of folks coming and feeling like there's neglect or blight in our commercial corridors. We don't want that. So uh, I'm really grateful for the collaboration and for uh, Mayor Breed's support for this issue and taking it as a priority and uh, how important it is, but also to folks in the community who helped us in writing this legislation. So specifically Sharky Laguana, um, our uh, president of our Small Business Commission, Susanna Wise, uh, with the CDMA, uh, Mario Monaghan, and all the folks who helped us, you know, read, edit the legislation and do what we needed to do to get it through. Uh, and to my colleagues who also saw the importance of this and uh, could put the money, invest in it through our budget. So thank you so much. Um, I specifically want to say that this woman, Carla Short, uh, who is our interim director of the Department of Public Works, has been amazing in building this up quickly getting it up and running, uh, making sure that we develop the forms uh, and uh, have a system for matching the paint and hiring the folks that we needed to hire. Because sometimes, you know, in uh, city government, you can have good ideas and you can write like the best legislation, but if you don't have those partners in the departments who also recognize the need and the importance and can operationalize it, then nothing gets done. So thank you so much, Carla. And to our city administrator, Carmen Chu, with whom I had many long conversations about this issue, uh, who also was right there uh, to put you know, some elbow grease into it and make sure that it got done. So thank you all for the wonderful partnership, the Inner Sunset Merchants, and to all the folks who you know, are now recognize this and we can get this done. Um, and thank you all for being here. Thank you so much, Supervisor. And, and I do want to note, first of all, thank you for, for the kind words. Uh, the Public Works Graffiti team is here, and they really were the ones to help make this happen quickly. So thank you to our team. I will say that the supervisor was constantly pushing us. Let's get this done. Let's make this happen quickly. Um, and of course, the mayor never hesitates to talk about graffiti. When are you going to get that done, Carla? So uh, it takes a village. Um, I also want to invite the president of the Small Business Commission, Sharky Laguana, to uh, say a few words. Uh, we love this legislation. Just, we absolutely love it. Uh, and I'm very grateful to Supervisor Melgar for introducing it, Mayor Breed for her support, and uh, you know, it's been previously mentioned, Director Short has just been absolutely incredible in coordinating and organizing the team to support this legislation. Uh, let me just briefly tell you why I love this legislation so much. At the end of 2020, our commission got an email from a business. Their windows kept getting broken. And it got broken so often that their insurance carrier said, we're not going to insure you anymore. So they said, OK, we'll board up the windows. They board up the windows. The windows get tagged. And then they get a notice of violation from the city saying, you're going to get fined if you don't clean up the graffiti. And they emailed us. And they said, why? Where is the support? And I thought that was a very good question. Uh, and I think that this legislation is, is, is an excellent answer to that question. It's something that we do in other cities. And, and one other thing I just want to make clear, while it is technically the business owners that are legally liable for the graffiti, under most lease contracts, it is the small business under these uh, triple net leases that ultimately has to pay for it. So even though it's, it's the owners that are responsible, it, it falls on the small businesses back. So this is something that is very helpful uh, to small business. It's something the small business community has been asking for. And so I can't thank you all enough for making this happen, because it's, it's just wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Sharky. Uh, we have our city administrator here with us today, Carmen Chu, who has always been a great supporter of our department and 
also uh, worked very hard with the supervisor to say, come on, can we get this done more quickly? What can we do to speed this up? So uh, thank you for your support and your pushing us to get it done quickly. And please say a few words or kick off the work. Uh, it's cold, so I'm going to be very brief and just say I want to thank the mayor for her leadership. There isn't a single day or a single meeting that goes by without her asking me what we're doing to do better to support our city in our recovery. So I just want to thank her for her constant, constant leadership, which is exactly what we do need uh, in this time. I want to thank uh, Supervisor Melgar, of course, for her idea and also pushing us to move uh, as quickly as we can. And I think the expectation that our leaders have of us, of the supervisor and, of course, certainly the mayor, is that once these ideas come through and are funded, it's our job to make them happen and to make them happen as quickly as possible. And I want to thank, as a result, our public works team, in particular Carla, for her amazing leadership during this time, but also for the entire crew for recognizing how important this is. They work day in and day out, our public works crew out there in the cold during the pandemic. And I just want to big, give a big shout out to them for their hard work and helping our city to shine. So thank you to everybody. And with that, we're going to paint out some graffiti. Do we get a brush? Yes, we do have fresh brushes. Thank you for those questions. Yeah, so we are employing six additional uh, general laborers to work on this program. Um, and we, our goal is to be able to address graffiti within 72 hours. Having said that, this is a brand new program. We don't know how many people, if we have 800,000 San Franciscans contacting us tomorrow and saying we want to opt in, we may not be able to reach that goal. Um, but we have a great team, they are experienced, and I think we are going to um, do our best to, to reach that goal within 72 hours. Well, not necessarily. <laughs> I, I can't speak for someone who would do this, but I will tell you, um, as someone who was the director of an arts organization, who worked with a number of graffiti artists who allowed them the opportunity and the canvas to express themselves in their work, it is important as a city that we provide a platform for artists to, to do so, and we provide a system by which they can work within. Um, but this is, is basically vandalism. And in fact, um, you might remember the legislation that we were able to get passed working with our previous city attorney to go after people civilly. Um, and we've actually charged people, um, develop cases, which we continue to do with the photographs and, and, and you know, video and, and other things that are used to develop a case that even though we're not necessarily going after people criminally, we are um, seeking financial damages for what a lot of these vandals are doing to uh, private and public par uh, property in the city. So um, I, I can't speak to why they do it. I think it's really unfortunate, but um, I do think it's also important that we provide alternatives. And as a city, I, I feel with many of our great arts programs, we've been able to do that. But um, I don't know if that's going to solve the problem completely, but we're going to make sure that they are not only ways to abate it, but also ways to hold people accountable for what they do um, that cost people money. All right, let's paint. That looks great. You know, I'm doing the, I'm doing the prep work for the real professionals. Yes, because, you know, we, we, had to, we had to do this sometimes when we were growing up, you know, when we had problems, and every now and then, housing authority would give us the paint and then we had to paint it ourselves so my grandmother made us work and then you guys will get in the nooks and crannies of it right this is therapeutic by the way if anybody else wants to wants to do it i think you got it